In the last video, we discussed about uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion means uh, the speed is remaining constant with time. A body moving in a circle has got a constant speed. And we saw that a body moving in a uniform circular motion has got an acceleration radially in our direction. And that is called centripetal acceleration. So we came across the word centripetal over there. What is centripetal force? What is centripetal force? See, if uh, the body moving in a circular path has got centripetal acceleration, see if an observer is observing from outside, if the body is moving in a circular motion, and if we have inertial observer observing this, see if inertial observer is finding a body moving in a circular motion, then in that case, uh, there is an acceleration radially in our direction. And since there is acceleration in radially in our direction, you must have a force in this direction. Because in a cell observer, in an inertial reference frame, if you have acceleration in certain direction, there must be a force in that direction. So in order to carry out a circular motion, you must apply a force in radially in our direction. And that force is called centripetal force. In fact, a general definition of centripetal force is any force which uh, makes the body move in a curved path is called centimeter force. So this is a situational kind of force. This is a situational kind of force. Given a situation, you can make any force centripetal force. For example, if you have, a, say, sun and earth system, earth is moving in elliptical path. Then, what make, which force makes the earth move in elliptical path? It is gravitational force exerted by sun. So here, gravitational force exerted by sun on the earth is a centripetal force. In case of hydrogen atom, what makes the electron move along around proton? This is H atom. So which force makes the electron move in a curved path around the proton? It is electrostatic force. So electrostatic force is centripetal force over here. Electrostatic force is centripetal force over here. If suppose I have a person and he is holding a string and at one of the one of the, one of the end of the string, there is a stone getting tied. Now he is start rotating. He is start moving his hand, and this stone start undergoing a circular motion. This stone start undergoing a circular motion, which can rotate the stone tied with the string, and the stone undergoes a circular motion. So here, which force is making? Which force is making a stone move in a curved path? It is tension in the string. So here tension in the string is a centripetal force. Here tension in the string is a centripetal force. Get your point? So given a circumstances, I can make any force to be centripetal. In a circumstances, I can make any force a centripetal force. Get your point? Like if you leave a charged particle in a magnetic field, then that charged particle will start moving in a circular path. If you release charged particle with certain velocity in the magnetic field, then that charged particle undergoes a circular motion. So what is that, uh, which force makes the body move in a curved path? There it is, QV class B, large force. Large force makes the charged particle move in a curved path in a magnetic field. Right? If you have read this uh, Lorentz force is good. If you don't have, if you, if you have not read, you will read it later on in electricity magnetism. So Lorentz force makes the makes the body makes the charge move in a curved path. So any force which makes the body move in a curved path that is called centripetal force. That is called centripetal force. And in case of circular motion, the centripetal force will be towards center. That is making the body accelerate in this direction 
right so centripetal force will be simply mass into x centripetal acceleration mass into centripetal acceleration all right get your point now what is a centrifugal force i have discussed with you what is centripetal force then what is centrifugal force Can you tell me what is centrifugal force? See, we have a national observer and he is observing the body moving in a circular motion. So body will move in a circular motion only when there is some force in radially inward direction and that force in radially inward direction is going to make the body move in a circular path. So this inner observer who is inertial observer, inertial observer means observer which is non-accelerated. How this observer is going to write equation of motion of this particle, which end up going a circular motion? He will say that a centripetal force is acting. Suppose I take an example. Suppose we have proton over here, and we have electron. Electron is moving in a circular path. Suppose so inertial observer will say that electrostatic force of attraction is acting on this electron in radially in our direction. Then that force is. E square by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. That is force in radially inward direction, and that is leading to an acceleration radially inward direction, which is V square by R. Get your point? That is leading to an acceleration radially inward direction, that is V square by R. This force is leading to this acceleration. We have a force in radially inward direction, and that is giving rise to an acceleration radially inward direction, right? No centrifugal force. See, centrifugal force, centripetal force is a real force. I must tell you. Whereas centrifugal is pseudo force. So when the observer is inertial, there is no role of centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is pseudo force. It actually does not exist. You make use of centrifugal force. When do you make use of pseudo force? When you try to correlate. The observation made by non-inertial observer with the forces. We have seen it in laws of Newton laws of motion. We make use of pseudo force when we make when we try to correlate the observation made by observation made by a non-inertial observer with the forces. Since here the observer inertial, you don't require pseudo force. He is seeing the body moving in a circular path. His body accelerating radially in one direction, and there is a centripetal force, and that centripetal force is leading to acceleration radially in one direction. So that is everything is quite good for inertial observer. But now, if I keep my observer on the body itself, if I keep my observer on the body itself, what he is going to observe? This is O1, which is non-inertial observer. Why is non-inertial? Because he is residing on the body, and body is undergoing a circular motion, and when the body undergoes circular motion, the body is accelerating radially in one direction. So this observer is also undergoing circular motion. Since this observer is attached to body, and body accelerates, so the observer also accelerates. So observer is observer is also undergoing a motion radial motion in circle motion in a circle, and hence this observer is also accelerating radially in one direction, and hence he is. Non-inertial observer. See, if I keep my observer on the body itself, he is a non-inertial observer. But his observation regarding the body is very simple. What he is going to observe regarding the body? What he is going to observe regarding the body? What he is going to see? He will find body to be at rest. He will find body to be at rest. Why? Because he is an observer attached to the body. So every observer. Inherits the motion of his frame. Every observer inherits motion of his frame, so he'll find body to be at rest. A very natural example I am saying, telling you, sun, earth. Earth is moving around sun. So if I keep my observer on the earth, like we, we are the observer on the earth. So what motion we see in the earth? We see earth to be at rest. We find earth is at rest. Why? 
because we inherit all the motion of the earth. Similarly, this observer is going to inherit all the motion of the body and hence he is going to find this body to be at rest. So his observation is that this body of mass m lies in equilibrium. This body of mass m lies in equilibrium. So if it is lying in equilibrium, but you have this force, centripetal force acting radially in what direction? So you have a centripetal force acting radially in what direction? But still, O2 is finding body to be in equilibrium. And that's quite obvious. See, non s observer, it is his destiny to see violation of Newton's second law. He is finding a force, but still he is finding acceleration to be zero. So his observation, we cannot correlate by, uh, we cannot correlate his observation with the force in Newton's second law. But once I apply this pseudo force, then his observation can be correlated with the force in Newton's Newton second law. So in that case, in which direction he should apply a pseudo force? When do you make your pseudo force? When you are trying to correlate the observation made by non s observer with the forces. When you are trying to correlate the observation made by non s observer with the forces. So here uh, we have a non s observer who is attached to the body itself. See if I want to correlate his observation, what is his observation? His observation is this body is at rest. This body is not accelerating. right? See, if I want to correlate his observation with the forces, then apart from all the real force which is acting on the body, you must apply a pseudo force. And the magnitude of pseudo force is equal to mass of the body you are observing into acceleration of the frame of non s observer. So, non s observer is accelerating in which direction? In radially no direction because non s observer, since he is attached to the mass itself, he is also undergoing a circular motion. So, in a way, he is accelerating with v square bar radially no direction. So, pseudo force he must apply on this body is mass of the body he is observing, this mass is mass of this body, into acceleration of frame of non s observer. Acceleration of the frame of non s observer, which is radially inward. So, the pseudo force is mv square bar and direction will be opposite to the direction in which. This direction of pseudo force will be opposite to the direction of acceleration of non s observer. So, non s observer is accelerating in this direction. So, uh, the pseudo force you have to apply is in opposite direction. Whatever is the acceleration non s observer, you will apply pseudo force in opposite direction. So, pseudo force, the direction of pseudo force is opposite to the acceleration non s observer, and magnitude of pseudo force is equal to mass of the body being observed into acceleration of the non s observer. So, mv square bar, if I want to correlate the observation made by non s observer with the forces, I must apply, apart from all the real force, this is real force, I must apply a pseudo force, mv square bar, and this pseudo force is called centrifugal force. Since uh, it is lying readily outward direction, it is called centrifugal force, right? Centrifugal force. And now, you can write Newton's second law. See. Since this body is at rest, what is the net force acting on the body? Net force acting on the body is, this is the force acting radially in what direction? And this is the force acting radially outward direction? So that is the net force and that means to be zero because acceleration mass into acceleration which is zero. The body, the observer lying on the body is finding the body to be at rest. So you have the equation E square equals to 4 pi epsilon naught R square equals to mv square bar. But here this is not mass into acceleration, this is pseudo force. Whereas here this is mass into acceleration. Right? So your equation will turn out to be the same. And that's where pseudo force works. Right? So you need this centrifugal force only when you are trying to correlate the observation made by non-s observer with the force. You are keeping the observer with the body. If you are working from outside, if you are trying to correlate the observation by a non inertial observer, you don't need this pseudo force. So, centrifugal force is a pseudo force. Are you convinced? You should. If you are not convinced, I will take one example uh, to show how it is pseudo force. So, I will consider that example in the next video. Okay? Thank you very much.
See, uh, here in this video, I am going to discuss about circular turnings and banking of roads. See, when you are a vehicle, when you ride your vehicles and you take turn, you take the turn, then uh, let's try to see the physics of that uh, phenomena when you take turn, how the physics goes on, right? So, we have, uh, say, a circular Oh, this is road and uh, we have a circular turn over here right so this is a circular turn and we can have one more end This is turn. All right, and you have a vehicle. Say a vehicle is moving like this. You have the wheels, and the vehicle takes a turn like this. So when the vehicle takes a turn, suppose the velocity of the vehicle is v, then in a way it undergoes a kind of circular motion. See, for a motion to be called circular it need not move in complete circle even if you are moving only on one quarter or uh, semicircle then then also it is called circular motion even if we are moving on a part of circle then also i can say from here to here the body is in circular motion the body is lying in circular motion this is the arc of circle one quadrant then this is this is one quadrant of circle then this is also called circular motion if your body is moving in a part of circle, then during that duration we can say the body is in circular motion, right? So when the body is in circular motion, when the when it is taking turn, what are the forces acting on the body? This is your vehicle. Your vehicle is let me write like this. So what are the forces acting on this? Uh, 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 vehicle the forces acting on the vehicles are forces acting on the vehicle what are the forces acting see uh, we know one more one thing that uh, since uh, it's moving in a circular motion then in a way it is accelerating readily in what direction in a way it is accelerating readily in what direction See, in order to, in order that this would happen, in order that this would happen, you must have a force in radially in one direction. And which force is that? See, what are the forces acting on the vehicle first? One is gravitational force, mg, in vertically downward direction. And you have a normal reaction on the vehicle. One force is mg, and the other force is normal reaction. See, you have one force friction also acting over here and if there is no friction then you can't take a turn also if there is no friction you cannot take a turn there is a friction the the road has to be rough if there is a plain road there is no banking i'll come to this banking part if there is no friction over here the vehicle cannot take a turn so friction is sorry and when the vehicle takes a turn on the rough surface, the friction acts in this direction. Should I explain to you this, how the friction acts in this direction? It's very confusing. People will get stuck over here. How friction acts in radially in one direction? I will try to explain this, but that requires uh, the concept of rolling also in a way over here. So I will just try to explain to you try to understand this see let me draw one way one wheel see usual motion see usual motion of the wheel is so wheel consists the vehicle consists of four wheels so I'm just seeing the dynamics of one wheel the usual motion of wheel is 
wheel moves trans the wheel wheel undergoes two kind of motion translation and rotation translation and rotation and usually this v is omega v is equal to omega and hence the when wheel rolls that's called rolling when v is omega when wheel rolls on the plane surface you don't require any friction to sustain rolling you don't when wheel is rolling once it, it is rolling you don't need any friction to sustain rolling you will understand this uh, thing in uh, rolling chapter but you just keep in mind we will be we have a good discussion on this in um, uh, rotation chapter now if it is moving in a straight path friction is not required if it is moving in a straight path this don't need friction to sustain rolling but the moment you take a turn you are and the cycle cycle the moment you take a turn when you take a turn what happens when you take a turn what happens when you take a turn omega the direction of omega changes immediately see omega when instead of this you take a turn now your wheel is on this now wheel is and you take a turn it's moving in a straight line and you take a turn the wheel now let me use different color to make it more clear see omega changes immediately you take a turn omega changes immediately omega was in perpendicular direction omega is in in our direction this omega changes omega omega changes immediately direction of omega of course you don't need to change magnitude of omega when you take a turn direction of omega changes immediately and your omega see omega lies in this direction and v lies in this direction when it was rolling v was equal to omega v and omega they were equal and opposite when it was rolling v and omega that was equal and opposite now here the moment you take it the moment wheel takes a turn omega changes omega adjust immediately right the velocity keeps on in the same direction now we can split this velocity in two ways v cos theta and the one component v sin theta in horizontal plane itself there is one component the moment you change this uh, direction there is uh, omega immediately adjusts its direction and in direction opposite omega there is one component of velocity v cos theta you are taking a turn by theta you have taken a turn by theta so velocity will not change immediately velocity will have two component v cos theta along the motion and v sin theta perpendicular to the motion this v sin theta will try to make this vehicle move in this direction and in order to oppose this motion you must have a friction in this direction the moment you change the direction of uh, wheel your omega changes uh, adjust itself but velocity keeps on in the same direction this we immediately have got two component so in order to prevent wheel moving in perpendicular direction in order to prevent wheel moving in this direction you must have friction there is a motion in this direction in absence of friction there will be motion in this direction and wheel will skid but in order to prevent this motion if there is a friction this friction will immediately act in this direction this is a static friction and it will not allow wheel to move parallel to the motion perpendicular to the motion it will not allow wheel to move perpendicular to motion and this friction acts in this direction right and since you change this theta very slowly very slowly the friction in this direction which will act will keep on increasing v cos theta and keep on matching it with omega that's something which you will read in rolling that's something which you will read in rolling there will be one more friction component that will try to increase the linear velocity and keep on matching it with omega since theta does not change abruptly it will keep on increasing this v cos theta to v again and make it equal to omega but there will always be a friction force in radially in our direction to prevent this motion so there will be friction force which will not allow the wheel to move perpendicular to the motion so you have a friction force in this direction since wheel has got a tendency to move in radially outward direction you have a friction radially in your direction since wheel has got a tendency to move in radially outward direction 
you have a friction acting radially in one direction and this friction will be responsible for the circular motion this friction will be uh, responsible for the circular motion and this friction since it is static friction it must adjust its value such that this f is equal to mv square bar v square bar is the acceleration centripetal acceleration so this friction must adjust itself to this mv square bar okay so it must adjust itself to v square bar but if you if you try to if you try to take a turn and you try to take a turn with velocity see this friction has got a limiting value this friction has got a limiting value it will adjust itself to the value mu n right so but so at max in the limiting case what you have is but if your velocity is very high or radius of curvature is very small it is sharp turn and somehow if this quantity increases and because more than f max which is mu n in that case friction will not be enough to prevent this motion if your mv square bar is more than mu n that is maximum allowed value of friction maximum limiting maximum uh, value of friction you can say if this quantity is more than mu n then in that case friction won't be able to prevent or won't be able to oppose this motion and in that case this vehicle would be moving in this direction it will skid in this direction so in that case what will happen and it can happen quite often it can happen when v is very large if somebody tries to take a turn with high velocity or this r is small the radius is small this sharp turn then this can happen so to prevent this to prevent this we must have some more force in the radial inward direction apart from the friction force there must be some more force in the radial inward direction so that this equation is balanced so that right hand side does not increase more than left hand side so in that case what people do is they try to bank this road they try to bank this road if i see it from this side they will try to raise this part raise this part if you see it from this side the road will look like this if this is say point a and point b then point b is raised up they try to bank this road they try to raise this section not very high not by a very high angle but by a small angle they try to raise it so when they try to raise it see what happens in that case what happens is you have mg in this direction normal reaction goes in this direction earlier normal reaction was upward now normal reaction will go in this direction this is theta and you already have a friction force acting that is f and now apart from sorry it's not this you already have friction force acting and now what happens is you have apart from friction force is in this direction sorry you have friction force now when you bank the road n goes like this this is theta this will be theta and apart from f you have a component of n now n is slanted so you get a component of n that is n sin theta in radial in one direction and then this will be the equation so if your this value is high then on the left hand side we have more force in a daily inward direction so the value of friction to which uh, friction has to adjust will be less friction required will be smaller because now friction required will be because you have one more force coming out in radially inward direction so since this force comes out in radially inward direction the friction value which is required becomes less friction value which is required becomes less friction has to adjust itself to lower value right and that's what we have to see the friction required must be less than v1 and because this thing has come into picture so friction which is required becomes this earlier it was equal to mv square bar now it is mv square by bar by r minus n sin theta so now friction value which is required is less and then that can be managed so if you bank the road the vehicle can take a turn 
take this turn safely safely in that case there is a less chance that this will go more than this if it is extremely high velocity then even banking will not help you even banking is not going to help you if it is very sharp turn or, or turning with very high velocity anyway point so you understand this concept right if you, you you will find difficulty in getting this idea that how this f is really inward but you will understand it better if you st study rolling after in rotation all right and if you want that uh, uh, the person should take a turn the vehicle should take a turn on frictionless surface if you want that the the, the vehicle should take a turn on frictionless surface in that case uh, we can find the value of theta such that the vehicle can turn on frictionless surface also and that will be what how will you get that see when there is no friction the centripetal force has to be n sine theta only and that will be equal to mv square by r and you have n cos theta what n cos theta is going to do is going to balance this mg and then uh, the amount of banking which you need just divide by this tan theta equals to e square by rg so if you want that uh, the vehicle should uh, take a turn with velocity v and radius r then this is the amount by which the road must be banked in that case you can take a turn even without friction even on a smooth road even on a smooth road so this is the banking that you must be able to do all right so this is what we have okay thank you very much